All right, so we're recording now. And I'll start the meeting at 7.09, I guess. And why doesn't everyone introduce themselves? Okay, so I'm Ann Mazar. Well, this is the Community Preservation Committee meeting, and I'm the representative from the Land Use Committee, and my name is Ann Mazar. Peter Denton, housing. I command the Leah. I represent the Conservation Commission. Mark Centennial, Board of Selectors. Lynn Roberts, Historical Commission. Barry? Barry, I had a roll of planning board. Bill McHenry. Yeah, Bill McHenry, Affordable Housing Coordinator. All right. Um, I get all the speaking past tonight. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we, since Bill McHenry is here, why don't we move to um, the third agenda item, which is to discuss the use of the CPA funds for flagging wetlands and completing the EP report at 52 Providence. And so Bill is going to um, explain the town's received two grants to work on this property so that we could try to have some affordable housing built. And Bill is going to let us know how the money was spent. And actually, I printed out your sheet, Bill. Are you, I think you're on mute, Bill. Does somebody want to see the? Yeah, 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 I was on mute. You got caught. You can hear me now, I take it. Yes. Okay. And uh, Anne, can you make a note, please? Um, you still need to vote on that um, to approve that contract from last from last meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Anne, Anne thought it was a good idea to um, put together a little history of the two grants that we've received. Um, and you know, I don't want to just read what you can read, but I'll but I'll run through it. Um, in 2017, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, DHCD was offering what they called PATH grants, planning assistance towards housing. Very clever. And we applied for and received uh, twenty one thousand dollars. You can see the breakdown of the tasks that we applied for and were approved. And essentially, we did a feasibility study. Um, like, like I said, I can go through it if you want, but it's right there in front of you. We did a community engagement and outreach um, program. I don't know if you recall this, but <clears throat> we had several meetings in town hall, televised. We sent out a uh, visual preference survey online. Then we repeated some of that survey with the select board and a public audience. And of course, there was, um, as expected, you know, a lot of consensus on what the town would like to see in terms of, um, you know, the exterior uh, architecture of any kind of development in town. Um, essentially, I was going off of what we learned from the master plan survey, which was that, you know, the residents are very concerned about maintaining the rural character of the town and don't want some, uh, you know, development pressed down upon them that doesn't uh, blend in with the town's architecture and feel. And so we took that to heart and, um, you know, did this, did, did a lot of this outreach. Uh, the outreach was a very important component in my view. And an outgrowth of that was the next step, number three, which was to, um, produce the design guidelines handbook, which I'm really happy that uh, the, the planning board, the select board, essentially the town has adopted, which is just a very quick visual brochure to inform prospective developers of what our uh, design preferences are, the aesthetics, the, the uh, energy efficiency we'd like to see, the low impact development that we'd like to see, cost effective landscapes, and then CMRPC assisted me in putting together a first draft of a request for proposals. 
subsequently, by the way, <clears throat> I realized I was very un not happy at all with the that draft. Uh, it was incredibly repetitive and didn't read very well. So I researched other towns RFPs and sort of cloned off of another one with permission and rewrote the thing entirely. Okay, uh, is there any questions about that grant? I'll just try to go through the next one fairly quickly. Did you, so the total of that grant was $21,000. Right. Okay, and then in 2018, uh, DHCD offered another grant just for small towns. We were awarded 26,500, which we've been reimbursed for. But this is the grant that we're essentially finishing right now. And the reason we're finishing is we finished all the tasks, but <clears throat> with all the changes that were thrown at us, um, given the search for public water supply uh, location, um, we not only haven't quite finished the work, but we also in the middle of, I was gonna say in the middle of the stream, changed horses, which you'll notice in number two, task number two. So the scope of this, as you can see, was wetland delineation and permitting. We haven't quite finished that up. Uh, the second one was topographic survey and well site analysis. We uh, basically modified that step and got permission from the state to change that um, task uh, to uh, do some engineering work because we needed to consider other options for um, the well site and we so we ended up doing a groundwater flow study to find out where the flows were coming which direction groundwater was flowing from the clough septic system and the uh, highway um, uh, septic to figure out where we could actually locate a well we have a report. Luckily, we were nimble on that. Um, did we I have did a published report? Beg your pardon? We have a published report on no. that. No, I'll get to that. So okay. the, the last step is the well site exam and the report, and that is drafted by the uh, geoscientist, and that will be um, that will be uh, basically complete uh, finished. You know with being edited with the um, final determination of the of the uh, well site um, on the upper reaches of uh, 52 Providence. And then you can see at the bottom it says uh, we want to complete the wetland flagging. Uh, that That's the contract that we discussed last meeting. Uh, eventually we'd like to survey the 23 acres that are now proposed for disposition. That doesn't have to be done right away. We can deliver that. We can put that in the RFP as being a deliverable uh, before the site is conveyed. And then the, that last bullet there is about um, just the uh, final cost from the uh, our geoscientists to actually file that application with DEP. I hope that answers your question. I think that was Mike. It was Mike. Yeah. Right. Well, what, last uh, at our last meeting, I asked to take a look at the the uh, contract for the wetlands right. mission, and a couple of I looked at it. It's a boilerplate uh, contract, so I have some questions, and I okay. see some some interesting things here. Uh, number one, my first question is why why are we is this a grant that's going to pay for this study, or is that coming out of uh, the CPA? Well, uh, well you're, you're talking about the wetland flagging now, right? Are you talking about the money that we're going to that we are trying to hold on tonight to spend for this? Yes. The grant money is spent, and so th that's why Bill was explaining we need the additional <clears throat> money to finish this. So we want to use the administrative funds, and we will not be reimbursed. Okay. So my next my, my question is why are we why are we paying for for the delineation? Usually, in most cases, 
whoever buys the property and wishes to build, whether right. it's a ballpark, a house, a 40B development, or whatever it is, they do the application. Uh, do you want to answer Bill or? Yeah. Well, I got a few other things here. Well, why don't you answer that question and then. Okay. Well, I think I think Ann, in this case, because I, because I want to do some, um, I, I'd like to talk to the committee about, um, you know, just the progress, kind of like the pro uh, nature of this kind of work and the progress. Take a few minutes to do that. I think it, I'd rather hear Mike's all Mike's questions and make sure that because I'm going to address that in my little um, blurb to you folks. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Number one, that's that's one of my questions. Yeah. Uh, number two is uh, the contract. Right in the very first paragraph, the uh, Ecotech makes a statement saying that it, it must be noted that a significant portion of the site along Muddy Brook is mapped as priority habitat and estimated habitat for rare species. That is going to impact any development that goes on that piece of property. Rare species consulting is not included in this proposal. Right. Right. So I, if we're gonna if we're gonna go to the work and do the developers or the person that's buying the property, if we're gonna do their job, then we have to include that because that's a big part of it. That's gonna that that's gonna pop up and spoils plans. If it's yep. not a uh, the next thing is uh, again they're looking for the contract says they're looking for 120 dollars an hour for staff scientists. Uh, it doesn't say if that starts from when they wake up in the morning and get in their car, which is another issue. <clears throat> Mileage is from portal to portal. There's no. There's no find beginning and end. You know, they're coming from California. I, mean, I, I know I'm being uh, ridiculous on that, but they could be coming from upstate Maine. Yeah. We should, we should be aware of what it is. $140 an hour for $2,800, the, the price of $2,800 to $3,900. Right. So that's. 20 to 28 hours, man hours. Yeah. Is that one person, two person? There's basically 22 plus acre portion of the 52 Providence Street property. Is he going? Somebody going to be out there alone doing it, uh, or is he going to have help? So if that's 20 hours, that's 10 hours. If it's two. Uh, Again, and then there's no breakdown of the field work or office work. They basically say that what we will get is uh, we're not really going to get, as far as I can see, a defined plan. We're going to get some uh, notes on where the boundary is. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I mean, they're flagging it. You, are you saying we're not going to get a written report? Right, we're not going to get a map that, that says we're going to get something. Uh, I'll find it here. I underlined it. Basically, it's going to be one step above a, a paper napkin with some drawing on it. Uh, that's definitely unacceptable. Okay. Okay. A memorandum with a rough sketch of flag locations and transect locations will be provided to the client. Rough sketch. Okay. To me, that's unacceptable. That's like I said, that's one step up from a from a paper napkin. We wouldn't accept that at a, at a conservation hearing to uh, in an application. I don't see why we should accept that in, in contract. Okay. The next thing, like I said, there's no breakdown of field work hours versus the office work hours. How many staff scientists is it going to take? Uh, 
my next point, one of my questions, who recommended this echo tree? I've never heard of it. Okay. Um, and do they have any references? Does anybody, did they supply references to anybody, anybody here? Look at the references. Um, and like I said, I, I believe it's the by responsibility to do that work. It's obvious there's wetlands in it. Just look at the map. We have a no. statement from someone that says, significant portion yeah. of the on Muddy Brook. So Muddy, as the map shows, Muddy Brook goes right through it. So it is a very significant portion. So those are some of the concerns I got. Okay. We, in my opinion, we're not, we're not getting, we're not gonna get youthful information, especially if they're not gonna identify the priority habitat and estimate habitat of rare species. Right, okay. You know what I mean? That could be a showstopper right there for anybody. And if right. what we're trying to do is help the person or entice someone to uh, purchase this property and take the take the chance and and do and do this project, then I think we should be supplying some better information on that. Okay. Um, just before you answer, Bill, I just wanted to comment that all the transcript when Mike Mendelia talks says it's me talking, but it's not. Oh, it's only because you're lying. It's your account. Oh, so so it's anybody in the room who guesses. It's, it's not just. <laughs> it's like, does so it, weird. Does it put, you, you can close the transcript so you don't see it. You can actually stop the transcript. Does it put, does it put your voice coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so um, Ann Mazar, thank you for all those questions. So I can, I, I think I can, well, I know I can address. Oh, um, again, and one more thing, again, I know yeah. I have some questions. I'm in favor of the project to see if we can get this project done. I just yeah. want to make sure when we spend money, we're getting the best bang for the buck and we're not forgetting anything. Understood. And, totally understood. Okay. 32. 33 years on the Conservation Commission tells me that this is not quite. OK, so the priority habitat issue, um, we did have a preliminary. Um, it's not a ruling, but an opinion from NHESP as far as the uh, the three acres for the housing development itself that that would not constitute a taking. Um, that was just a um, unofficial, you know, statement, but nonetheless, it was an assurance that we wouldn't be uh, running into a problem there. So the only um, the the additional land would be the land going up that uh, pipeline path and then up at the top uh, where the uh, well development would be. And because they're going to be doing horizontal drilling and not trenching, there would essentially be um, almost no surface disruption. So I'm not going to tell you that NHESP would think this is, you know, insignificant, but I have confidence that um, we're in pretty good shape there, but we definitely got to cover that base. That's the best answer I have for you right now on it. I think it's a great thing to, um, to bring up. I don't know if you want to discuss that anymore. That's my best answer on that. As, as far as the contract goes, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it says, it gives all those hourly numbers, but it caps it at, at 39.20 plus travel. And that, I don't that's, have that, that's correct. It okay. Says the low, the low price is twenty eight hundred dollars. The high price, no more than uh, right. three thousand nine hundred twenty dollars. Right. If you develop right. those by one hundred and forty, you get yeah. twenty hours in the low number, yeah. twenty eight hours in the high number. My right. question: That's a big, that's a big area out there. Is he going to be out there alone? Is yeah. he going to be something out, out there? 
if he is right. out there alone, there's a liability involved if he gets hurt out there, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Does he, has anybody supplied his workman's comp, insurance papers, et cetera, et cetera? Is, right. The last thing we need is, God forbid, something happened to a guy out there and we're wondering, hey, that, how can we never get a report? And the guy's laying uh, dead out there because nobody knows that right. he's out so um, my response to you about the contract was just that we did get a <clears throat> excuse me we did get an answer about the travel time which I don't have that email in front of me I don't know if you can pull it up and it was but it was in the neighborhood of eighty five dollars total for two people two trips and um, with the cap of thirty nine twenty on the contract that would put us at a uh, you know shy of well, just, just right around four, right around uh, four thousand dollars. So, in my reading of it, it's capped at that. As far as the result goes, I know that our um, geoscientist, who is the who is the person that um, you know recommended these folks, um, he's just going to take their results and he's going to make them formal and put them include them in the report. So if they provide him with the map of all the flag locations, um, he's he's the one that's already told me he's going to turn that into a formal uh, report. Um, as far as the recommendations and making sure that they have uh, workman's comp and insurance, um, I can certainly verify that. Um, <coughs> excuse me, to the best of my knowledge. You know, this is a very reputable firm. I certainly trust the gentleman that's uh, recommending them, but I can do more diligence on that if the committee prefers. <coughs> and and I'll address why we're paying why we're paying for it in you know in a few minutes. It's in terms of the workman's comp and the disability, I mean. Yeah, check it. But I think that if the committee wants to vote, we could say yes, as long as they have the disability and workman's comp. Okay. I don't know what others think. Do you want me to launch into my little manifesto at this point, which might help? address the first question of why the town would want to pay for something like this? Sure. <clears throat> okay, so Ann, Ann and I were talking um, since the last meeting and, <clears throat> you know, I have always been really sensitive about concerns about why this project has been so slow and so uh, glacially paced and I want to say that I've always worked in the public sector where things, you know, move along pretty quickly and results are quantified and, you know, companies are pretty nimble in changing, you know, course and reassessing things. And so working in municipal government has been a really different experience for me. And the glacial pace, again, of this affordable housing work is really challenging for me personally. Um, I don't usually talk about the nature of this work, but mostly because I don't really want to sound defensive about it. So I'm thinking that sharing a little bit of what I've come to internalize, you know, lessons that I've learned might be helpful for the committee to understand the environment that I'm working in. Every year I would go to these seminars and conferences and I keep hearing all these stories and um, you know people offering advice and pre preaching basically lessons and I have to say that for the first few years I didn't really understand what was being said I, I don't know if you folks have heard the expression you know when the student is ready the teacher will appear but I've found that many times suddenly I would reach a point in this project where I started to get what people were saying. So I'm just going to share with you a couple of these like little tidbits and give you examples of what I'm talking about. So one of the things that's always stuck with me is 
since I understood it, was that affordable projects are not profitable, and if they were, everybody would be doing them. And, you know, if they were attractive to developers, it wouldn't take a whole lot for us to get a project going. Even if it, if it was for a nonprofit or a nonprofit developer, they would be eagerly compute, uh, competing for opportunities, but they don't. And to, so to make a product project attractive and financially viable, even for a developer, it it has to have subsidies and incentives to attract them. And this is where, you know, I'm trying to address your question, Mike. So examples of things that, you know, people in this business do to make these projects actually come to fruition is they'll offer land either through an extended land lease, a gift or an inexpensive sale. Uh, they put up cash subsidies, which are either lump sum or per unit, they just say X number of dollars per housing unit that's built. Um, pursue tax credits, which are just the government subsidies for rental units. Any developer that is worth his salt is going to uh, understand how to go after these tax credits. Um, you know, we do pre-development studies, feasibility studies, site assessments, soils, perking, wetland identification. These are that's what we've done. Do site work and engineering to re reduce developers' risks. Um, essentially that's why we're paying for these things yes they could do it but we're trying to attract good rfp bids and you know get sharp pricing and the best way to do that is to take care of enough of the risk assessment so that somebody says aha i you've identified enough for me to um that i want to jump into this project uh, other incentives might be in infrastructure, you know, developing roadways or utilities, and then building community support, you know, having the community vetting these projects in a sort of in advance and developer walking into a uh, basically a friendly environment that they, uh, you know, that they know that this project is is welcome. Uh, another thing that's always hit me over the head was it all boils down to community willpower. If the community's not supportive, it's going to be really tough to accomplish something. I have seen what I think is quite a shift in community attitude. Uh, when I first took this job, everything was anti 40B. Got to stop this, got to stop that. Um, I soon realized that was not really a workable attitude. Got to work with what the environment is. Uh, another saying was, you don't have anything until you have control of a site. Well, we went years just kind of bumping along the bottom. Everything was hypothetical. Suddenly, 52 Providence comes along. We've got control of it. So we started exploring the potential. Um, I've always, in, just as a side note, I've always been interested in, you know, the Fino Corner. Um, I personally would love to see a mixed-use development go in up there, um, but that's another topic. Uh, the fact that perseverance is essential. You know, you go on, you hit a roadblock, you get creative, you do it over again, you hit another roadblock, you just never give up. Uh, I've heard over and over again, people say, it's going to take you 10 years to get a shovel in the ground. Uh, every time I go to these seminars, I would hear these success stories that recounted years of setbacks and delays and workarounds and innovation and problem solving that eventually uh, led to completion of a project. And uh, as a general statement, I'd like to say that, you know, previous experience in Menden with affordable housing really left a bad taste for a lot of residents. And we've worked methodically to garner community support, solicit feedback, include the community in identifying you know, preferences either for or against what they want, don't want. And uh, Ann and I have worked under the principle that the first project that we complete has to be a big win for the community to show people that this is actually a good thing and it's going to serve our needs, um, you know, going into the future, especially with the changing demographic of the older uh, cohort in our population. 
And this particular site has just presented numerous challenges, but I think it still holds good potential. And that said, you know, we're not, we've, we've been the lucky recipient of a lot of grant money and we do have a lot of funds in the affordable housing bucket. And um, so, you know, I think there's still good potential here, but we're always looking at um, opportunities elsewhere. And I sort of shy from mentioning it, but I will, that I stopped taking my housing uh, stipend, essentially my pay. Uh, I'm not sure how many months ago, but I just felt like, uh, you know, I haven't been able to return value for, uh, you know, or put in or put in enough to, you know, make a lot of progress recently. And we've just been stymied by delays. And I'm at retirement age where I just want to see this project, um, you know, get to a shovel in the ground. And I'd be ha happy to bank money in that affordable housing bucket to, um, you know, have somebody else work with me or take over um, eventually. But um, my concern right now is just getting this project seeing it to uh, to completion or to the point where we determine that it's just not going to work. But I, I hate to end on that note because I really think this is workable. So anyway, thanks for listening to that. It's kind of a, a blur, but I don't, that's not something I talk about a lot, but I think it's good for, um, you know, good for background. So with that, that I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, that was really um, helpful. And um, I think it's been like six months that you haven't taken pay at least. Okay. So. Um, so to answer well, Mike's question, if you will, you know, we do, we only do this not because we have to, but because, you know, when a developer sees that, oh wow, okay, they've got the wetlands figured out, they've they've got a site for water, they know the soils perk, they've got access from the street. I mean, there's more we could do, but we are so close to putting out an RFP as soon as we get this uh, well site exam uh, application in, uh, we're, we're done. I mean, we need we need to get this um, RFP out. Sorry. Well, everything you said is absolutely true. Uh, Bill, yeah. I understood that I'm in favor of for the overall project. Yep, thank you. I have, uh, and I will, I have backed the land use committee, this committee, since these, this committee was formed 10 or 12 years ago, land, okay. land bank committee. Uh, if you look back at the history of the land bank committee, you'll see the very first members on it, you'll see my name on it, some 25, maybe even 30 years ago. So mm -hmm. I understand what we're trying to do here as a group. And that's why I stay involved and I give my time. I never ask for a paycheck. I don't want right. a paycheck. I volunteer my time. You can okay. have mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I said, there's something, I don't believe we should be doing the work of the, of the developer. Either the developer's going to know what to do or he's not. And that's how we're going to get trapped into having uh, terrible developers. I've seen it over and over again. As I look around this table, I know one other person on this table has been involved with the planning and, uh, of, the, of land around this town for longer than I've been involved. And I've been involved for 33, 35 years. It's Peter Denton. I'm sure he can tell you right off the tip of his tongue, who, who's a good developer and who's a bad developer. But it's up to them. Our job is for the people, the taxpayer, the people who are gonna live in these ones. Um, I, I just wanna comment that um, on, on 40 Bs, you, only a quarter of your houses have to be affordable. So you make your money on the other houses. In this, they're, it's, this is all affordable. And like Bill said, if you want to have a project like that, you have to supplement it. And Bill's gotten $47,000 in grants to do a lot of the work. And we, we want to lay down the groundwork so that we can pick a good developer. And in this case, we the town owns the land, so we have a lot of control. A lot of those um, 
development you're talking about, the town didn't own the land. So they, they couldn't choose the developer and they just had to react to it. So this is a different situation. I understand. Yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we don't. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Be doing, I don't think we should be doing the developer's job. No. Wait. Either well, the guy is capable enough to handle the job. It says right here, there's a lot. Of, there's a, this is not just a high and dry spot. There's some serious wetlands involved. There's a serious habitat. So, if I may, so on, on, on what they're delineating, and, and as far as the habitat is concerned. So I think the question was answered about the habitat. At least we have a, a rough answer on it, right? I don't know if we have a, a, a specific, but the habitat or, or the wetland area is not being touched. So to delineate the, the edge of the wetlands so that we can, we can determine where to put the wells and, and getting those pieces out of the way, I think is really what the, the goal is here. Um, we're going to get, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Bill, did you say that once we get the report with the rough sketches and the, and the delineation, that's going to be translated by the, was that going to be translated onto a set of, of, of uh, plans from the, trying to just remember what you said a few minutes ago. Yeah, uh, I, I describe him as a geoscientist, but he's the, he's the gentleman that's uh, preparing the um, hijack hunter. Thanks for joining us. Um, he's the one that's preparing the application for the site exam for DEP, and so he's going to formalize what the results of the um, wetland flagging and include those in his um, his application. Could you, could you define formalize? Are we going to get as as one of the concerns was? Are we going to get a set of plans that show us the wetlands? I, th you know, I'm going to be as transparent as possible. I think. The answer is yes, but we're going to get them from the geoscientists, not from necessarily from the wetland okay. flaggers, and I can confirm that. I'll That's okay. So, so okay, and again, because we're really just talking about this contract, I just wanted to be clear that yeah. what we're going to get is more of a report, as it says in, in the contract, and the building is not going to take place in the wetland area or in the habitat area. So again, I think that there's still going to be a lot more that needs to be done by the developer. And I think that in, in this case, where this is, is, a, is a hurdle that needs to be crossed in order for us to get where the wells are going to um, be placed. Uh, and that's what this delineation is for. Am I correct in saying that? Um, I am not sure about that because because of the horizontal drilling, right? We're not actually disrupting anything on the surface no, of the land. Oh, you're, hold on, I think you misunderstood my, my, my question. Do we know where the wells are going to be placed as of today? Why are we delineating the wells? As a pre-development step, um, essentially, we're taking we're taking that we're we're making that a known variable for okay. a developer before they before they bid so they can bid with more confidence. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Jack, Jack's shaking his head. He might be able to answer that question better than I can. No, no, I, I, I that's fine. I, I, I that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I don't, don't know. I was just gonna say, Jack. I don't know when you came on, but one of the concerns that um, Michael Mendelia has is that um, the town shouldn't be paying for the wetlands delineation at this point that the developer should. So I don't know if you have a comment on that. Well, it's just a, a policy decision really. Um, and Bill is right. The more you can do upfront using affordable housing monies, then the more tantalizing the project is to a developer. Um, you put more cost on the developer, you're going to get less competition, if any. Um, for instance, I, I'm doing a pro I just got off the off a meeting, a project in Hudson where the town CPA is paying to demolish a building just to make it the land ready to go for the developer. So you know you kind of pick and choose what you want to do and how far you want to go. But that's a policy decision. That's not a uh, Jack decision. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that 
I think we've talked through it quite a bit. Um, I, I mean, I, we just need to, I think, vote and see if we're going to go forward with it or not. Um, uh, as far in my opinion, I, so I'll, I'll make a motion to you know vote to, to at least move a vote on it to accept the contract for Ecotech, um, and then we can have a little bit further discussion if you'd like, and then now we can vote it up or down. So accept the contract, and then we vote for the dollar amount. Or I, I, I would say I, I would say this. So right now, yeah, I think this was a, a little bit of a pick up the first time we talked about it. So, Bill, was that eighty five dollars cap for the travel, or it was just a suggestion? Um, I don't have the exact wording. Um, again, and if you have that email, I was searching for it, but I didn't find it while we were talking. But um, the gentleman at Ecotech basically said it's based on the IRS uh, formula for number of miles. It's from Worcester for two people, two trips, and he estimated it would be topped at around eighty-five dollars. If you so want, we're talking to, okay, so the high, high number is thirty-nine, so thirty-nine hundred, so twenty I'll, plus plus eighty yep. something. So if you if you put like four thousand fifty dollar cap or something like that, that would I'm I would sorry. make a motion that we would. I would make a motion to accept the Ecotech contract with a cap of forty five hundred dollars, just in case there's anything that, that you know, there's always a contingency. So that's my motion. All right. Is there a second on that? Second it. Okay. Um. More discussion. Uh, again, the only thing I'm going to say uh, is, again, I'm all for the overall project. I don't believe we should be doing this particular aspect of it. We shouldn't be delineating the wetlands. The wetlands are there. Everybody knows it. Look at the topo map and we'll show you. Any developer that we're going to get is going to prove if he knows what he's doing. So, again, the problem project is great. We're going to work to try to get it done. I don't believe we should throw $4,000 away <clears throat> on this particular aspect. Of it. Um, Barry, do you have any questions? Barry, you're still on mute. Yeah, if you're there. <laughs> There you are. I'm just listening. No, I'm, I'm oh. listening to everything. Okay, just want to make sure. Yep. Um, Peter, do you have any questions? Or? No, I, I have to go along with what Mike said. It, 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 see, you know, it's hard, it's hard to, to make an intelligent decision on this until you know, until I know, what are we even talking about building? etc and go from there well, and that's hard to do i know you got to get this stuff done to stop it but i think mike's got a point you know kind of a good money after bad situation but at, at this point in time well the next step once this would be done would be to send out the rfp so that we would know what we would be able to look at what kind of a project could be built there that would be the next step so, all right, then why don't we take a vote on it? Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, um, Peter, right. um, Barry? I'm going to stay. All right, and uh, Peter? No. Mike? Hey. So, okay, so then I, I vote yes. Okay, so that's three yays and then two no's and one abstain. All right. So then the other part was um, to finish the DEP report. That's another vote. Right, Bill? You're on mute, Bill. 
Thank you. Um, yeah, the normally this would have been included in the um, the grant. It was included in the grant, um, but because we've had to change courses several times, um, you know, given the challenges that we had, you know, moving the potential well site around, um, this is just like a, in a way, like an overrun. In other words, the report was already pretty much prepared. Now we have to edit it, submit it. It was in pretty much final form. Now we, and this is a this is a high estimate, by the way. I I have no idea whether it would come in lower, but I was assured that this was tops. Was the quote? How much is this one, Bill? Uh, Joel is estimating five thousand dollars tops. And Joel is the person that you've been working on um, with the grants. Yeah, and the entire time, right? This, this is just clarify. This is the DEP report for the well. This is the uh, site exam application. The report, the report that goes along with the site uh, to DEP for them okay. to approve to approve the well site. Okay. I would move to approve up to five thousand dollars for the requested for the EP. Did that get you to approve? That'll that'll get us. That'll get us to report to get approved. I can the, I can address that. It's it's a little comp. It's a little complicated. So as Mike was saying, <clears throat> you know, we don't want to do the work um, of a developer. Um, the developer is the one who's going to pick it up from this point forward, meaning they're going to drill the wells. They're going to, um, you know, pay for all the testing. They're going to uh, basically uh, construct, you know, the pipeline going down, manage the water. By the way, we were originally hoping to own the wells ourselves and be able to supply the senior center and possibly even other town purposes, and we would sell the water itself to the housing development, but all that's changed. Uh, so anyway, we're the town is not going to expend money um, after this point to um, build the wells, maintain the wells, test the wells, any of that. It, this is our last step. Any questions? Well, does that mean a second? Oh, second, second. Yeah. Okay. okay, any questions? Barry, any questions? No, I'm good. Okay, uh, let's vote on this. Um, Lynn? Aye. Uh, Bonnie? Aye. Um, Mike? I'm going to abstain. Peter? Aye. Barry? Aye. All right. Do I vote? No. Only in a time. All right. Um, then it passes. All right. Thank you, Bill. And well, thank, thank you, Jack. You. Thank you for um, you know listening to my little spiel there. I hope it was helpful for some. I mean, um, it's helpful yeah. for me to say some of that stuff. So thank yeah, I think you. It was an overview. Okay. Thank, thank you for joining us. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. Um, Barry, do you want to approve the minutes quick? Yeah. That was the date on. <clears throat> what was the date? Yeah, the date 12, is 1221. 12 21. I move to approve the meeting minutes of 1221. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, yes. All right, so Kathy is here because um, the Historical Commission might be requesting some administrative funds, and so we won't vote on anything tonight, but I thought it'd be good if she explained what they might this be. This is why. <laughs> 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 um, uh, 
Um, no, why? Oh, I don't know. Why? Oh, I'm I'm there in case I can screen share, but I don't think I'm going to be very successful. At oh, okay. So. so she's at her computer and it, yeah, and it's here. I just wonder if it's one of you want me to do the thing by itself? Oh, hey, <laughs> 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 um, uh, We have been, uh, uh, as you know, we left, the Historical Society left the records room back in 2017. Um, since then, was it 2017? No, I have to be. 2018. 2018. Yes, I'm around now. Uh, so, uh, in the process, we cleared everything out of the building, and the building has had chronic issues um, since the beginning of time. Um, since it's been um, vacant, we have water in the basement on a regular basis. We have some pump that works and then fails. The foundation is uh, dry laid stone. It's not cemented or um, secured, so we're, it's always taking the table water. Or the ground water. Um, so uh, we have been looking, calling people out to take a look at the property, give us some ideas. And some mm -hmm. I guess Barry, can you hear Kathy? She's broken up, but I can I can still hear her. I'm just talking a lot. <laughs> um, so we we've been working for a couple of years now on trying to find a solution for the building, and most importantly, if we go ahead and move forward. <laughs> trying to do repairs on the building, why are we saving it? You know, well, it's in a historic district. It's an 1825 set Hastings law office. Um, I believe we actually have it in our possession of the uh, garage of his law box. So, I mean, and for a long time, it was historically City Hall. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, believe it or not, um, the building has nothing. No running water, it does have heat, um, and it has uh, no septic system. So we had um, uh, Brad Green come out from a Colonial Restoration to take a look at it and assess the property. Um, we have some uh, significant still damage from particles beetles, which are reoccurring because of the moisture in the basement. The main floor has sagged. Um, there's a lot of uh, mold starting to gather up around the seams of the building. Um, but we believe it's certainly worthwhile to say uh, what we do with it after that, not sure. And I think that's where, you know, this light we have to decide. Do we repurpose the building for municipal purposes? Do we sell the building? Um, and do we just use it for storage and skip? any, you know, septic in water. Um, so we're now, we got Burton Engineering that's come up taking a look at the property. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up with a skeleton proposal for us to present to the town. Um, they are giving us three options. One is to do nothing. The second is to do only minimal repairs in order to stabilize the building. And the third is to bring in water and septic and a a bathroom, so to speak. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to share the septic plan for number nine, Main Street. And on that plan, this is their new septic plan. So this is not. So sorry, number nine is the, the brown building? Yes. Yep. So you see the property right next to it. It belongs to the town of Mendel. The long strip? Yeah. Yep. And that was a tax taking in 2014. Mm -hmm. So there is a chance that uh, through the engineering, they've taken a look at the initial concept that they could put a well in the front of the building. Mm -hmm. Where's the building? Uh, it is 13 Main Street. So it's two houses down. This, this way? Um, yeah. Towards the, to this way. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so then. So we have the brown house, a sliver of land in the middle with Mendon's. Yeah. And then is it is it Mark's house, Pacino? Yeah. Mark's house, and then there's the, and then there's the, the room. Room. Okay. So the entire it what further complicates the issue is that that entire building, the land that it is attached to it is only the footprint of the building. So all the land around it 
belongs to Jane Davy Hall. And number 15. Mm -hmm. So well, if there's no setbacks, there's no room. It's it's pretty much the edge of the building. Right, it's the edge of the building. So we brought in uh, Jane and Dave to talk to us as well uh, two nights ago mm -hmm. to discuss, you know, whether we could do an easement or some kind of arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, they see to be, they, they would like to see the building safe. Mm -hmm. um, David suggested perhaps to move it. Um, the question is where do you move the building to? And at what cost? Yeah, right. So, um, I mean, in theory, the building could stay in its present location. If we can get improvements done to the building, which we are hoping to do through uh, a mixed uh, funding through CPA and an MPPF grant. And we are attempting to do that. It's round 28, and the deadline for the applications is March 18th. So we are coming in to ask and see if we can get funding for the engineer. Um, if we don't make the step, we can go backwards and do a pre-development grant with the MPPF uh, grant rounds. But it will, you know, it's just another year or two that that building will sit. And the sill family and water in the basin, um, I believe the Historical Society did a really good job at trying to secure the building to the best of their ability. You know, they fixed the roof, they fixed the flashing. Um, we are working on gutters. Alan's been out several times to help with some of the water issues, but it really is a, it's a large problem. That you know, we're only throwing money out right now. So, so starting. look at this cool little path. It's called a landline. So if we pretty much, well, I mean, I suppose the the lot lines could be wrong on here, but it pretty much shows that <laughs> that the, it's really in David's land on here. And again, it could be wrong. But which might be why David said move it. <laughs> no, I get it. However, yeah, well, it's a, it's a, I don't even know if it's a building block. But it, show, it shows that the records room on, on this is actually in, on David's land. And to the right of if that is the town of Menden's land. Yes. So, uh, and then we have this over here that was a tax. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> Then this is a question. Yeah. Are we talking about the historical building or the record? The record room. The record room. Okay. No, not, not the one in Farmers Park. The, the one over there. Now we can start again. But I would say maybe 15 or 20 years ago, Dan um, uh, did Gunner and Tom Hackins, and they worked on the museum building, and they had done. Some, you know, they cemented the floor, put in new posts. Um, I mean, that we had that evaluated as well. It's going to need some more work to the extent that this particular building does. So that's. Yeah, you're right about the river. Water in the cellar. I've been down in that cellar several times. We've been on there for years. And I hope that there's some function in kicking out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the minute I see moisture in the windows, I know I have to go down and check the uh, Do we just get a pump? On. Do we need a new pump? Uh, we bought a pump two years ago, so that seems to be working. But it's, it's a very busy pump. It's sure. No. Okay. So I'm just wondering, you know, I just wonder if. Well, a little bit I hear about it. I think if we're going to do something which we store it 100 percent, if the Lowell's are willing to give us a work easement around it, dig around it, waterproof the outside, stop the water from getting in, we okay. store it. At one point in time, this is how Menden was. That was a built there for a reason. Who knows? None of us were around then. I don't think we should destroy it or move it. What do you think? The bank. So, I think we should be stored 100%. Yeah. And, and, and I think that maybe 
And we can talk, and, and there's only hypothetical, so please don't be next week um, when that doesn't work. And so even if even if this say this map is right, right? Without moving that building, that lot is kind of useless to the world. However, it has that lot has significance to the other land that's owned by the world. Yeah. Um, around it. If we could maybe cut off a portion of this and make that a little bit just a square lot so we could even drop a tight tank in there that didn't even require a septic, we can do some sort of, of uh, very small septic because it's just going to be a single bathroom and a sink or something, and maybe swap some land, uh, whether it be for a dollar on the deeds or something like that, which we can do um, for sure. But I think that we can probably really talk about some things that would work for this because just cutting off a small portion and leaving it sort of busts that other piece of property that they own so that they could extend that property if need be. This, this lot alone with that building in the way, unless we moved it, they wouldn't be able to build on it anyhow because it doesn't go direct through to Elm. So it's kind of not conducive to anything other than us moving that and then they would have it. They have a buildable lot if it was even a building. Um, Silence. It says that uh, three six acres. So and it's it's so small. Yeah. Uh, and then what we the, what we would need of it would be not much of it. And then depending, we could swap over that sliver that's going there if that was helpful for them at all. Or, I don't know. I, I, there's some ways, or just buy it. Maybe we just buy it and, and you know, give them a. Fair market value for it, they're willing to sell. So I think that, that that's a conversation that we should have with with the locals though, yeah, first. Absolutely. And because if we can if we can figure something out there, that lot would then be much more useful uh, to that. And if maybe if there's a little bit more, we can do more with it. I don't know. But there's definitely some stuff we can do. And I I, I agree there, but we can definitely restore it to its full potential. And if we can make it more usable with a bathroom, and that's just a plus. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that we give the town an opportunity to rent it out. If it didn't work, it could be an office, although we have a museum. Like I said, I think we should restore it 100% to the. When was that built? Do we have records? 1825. We rebuild it to specifications of 1825. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty close. The first thing we do is we. Is there a plan downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> if we dig around it and get the walking. Get a drain in there. Get a, uh, a French drain in there. That from waterproof the outside, and then yeah. we go for it and we'll store it to the 1825. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that would be a fun drive. Okay. We could get a lot of different uh, types of organizations involved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trade school, vocational school. I'm sorry, we didn't call it the trade school. But you follow what I'm saying? Oh, to, to restore it, to have uh, BBT send some carpenter students over with someone that is an expert in the 1825 carpentry skills. Yeah, yeah. It would be quite a uh, quite a community uh, achievement. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think it's very unfortunate that nobody ever gets to go in there. And again, we're not we're not talking a, a ten story building. No. Of a 10,000 square foot building. We're talking a little building, size of that right there. It's a, it's a fun project. What's this? Is this is community preservation. So, so CPC and then I made up one? Uh, CPC. Oh, no, it's like community preservation. I think it's the name. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think the location of the building also, you know, right in the center of town, the historic district, and having it fixed, people would really notice it. Yeah. Right now, you don't so much. But um, how much money do you think you would need for the administrative funds and, and when do you need it? So it looks like we will need, um, I, I just um, tried to get Steve Burton um, to respond if he was in meetings today. Um, if we could spend anywhere between ten dollars and $15,000 to get a solid engineering plan. So either way, yeah. we can, you know, if we decide, okay, that's, the extent of our commitment, sell the building, sell the plans, let somebody else deal with it. Or we 
go ahead and apply for this grant, which is March 18th is the deadline. Um, I don't know if that's the time that we can burden, but I will, I'll ask, but you know, when they want your first check. I say we go for the grant. I say, and I say we keep it. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and then, I mean, we could always lease it, but I think we could do more, a lot more with it um, as a community. Than, in, in, depending on what we can do with that lot, that that lot might even be, you know, we, we were talking about with the master plan, with the gazebos and things like that, and we're looking to grab the corner, and that's probably not financially feasible for us to grab the corners. It's probably worth a little bit too much money, but that's, that lot that goes behind that, there's, there's some trees back there that you could maybe put a little bit of, maybe you could put a gazebo back there. That you could do a little bit more with it. And again, and it's in that walking path of the downtown area. Yeah. The yeah. So, just an opinion. I, I, I see definitely a lot of things we could do here. So. Yeah. So when and, you know, as, as little as that little building may be, I, I think it's got a lot of stuff that can happen. <laughs> we're we're going to meet back in there with no heat back when you were young. Is there a fireplace too? Yeah. Uh, there is a hookup for fireplace. Yeah. So, so. Oh. Uh, the first engineering asked us, well, you know, what did the tech, because I think the town clerk was over there for the yeah. stretch Coleman. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, and he said, What do they do for bathrooms? And this was maybe the 70s. It's not walking stuff. It's a Danny's variety. That's short of meeting. It might be on the Yeah. So if we vote, um, our, our next scheduled meeting is the first Tuesday in February. Okay. Is yeah. that, a, that a, an okay time? Yeah, and we're going to get a scale of the plan next week, and I'll be certain. Basically, you're going, to, you're going to fine tune the amount. Is that what you yeah. want? Because I, I, yeah. I don't okay. see a problem with voting for it. Now, in fact, I was going to say, why don't you, why don't we vote on twenty thousand to make sure you have enough? Because, like I said, it's a small, it's a small building. It's worthwhile, as Lonnie pointed out. It fits into what we're trying to do here as a walking. That, I don't want to use downtown, okay, but it's a okay. walking downtown area. Let's make this. Well, let's, can we meet with, why don't we just get to the next meeting? Let's meet with, with Jane and, and, and uh, David yeah. see, and get their thoughts on what they might be willing to do. Yeah. Um, and what, and then we can, I can even bring that to the next selectors meeting as, as a note to mm -hmm. keep that information flowing in, in, on that side. And yeah. then we can continue to meet. Should we invite Jane and David to the next meeting, are you saying? Or uh, but I'd say let's see if we can meet sooner than that, just okay. to get the ball rolling. Maybe yeah. just on the uh, Kathy and I can meet, meet up with them, a couple of copies. Well, and then the other thing is the ramp. Oh, this ramp. Yeah. Um, I did hear back from Ross Deagle. Um, I have been going through all the town reports trying to find some indication of when it was built. And I mean, I think what, the ramp outside here? Yeah. That happened when. 25 years ago? Did this ramp right outside? I don't think it's that old. It wasn't modified. I don't remember. That no. ramp was 25 years old. It was built after I was involved in, in, in that. So, what? So, 20, 25 years? It's not, it's but not. I feel like that that's only 1995, though. You think it was that's the only one? Yeah. Hey, time goes by. I know, so that's not my, my, my bad. bad. <laughs> right, <laughs> but so maybe they, they said originally the ramp it was flat, right? And, and then it went was, the and they, that was after World War II, was it 1947? They yeah. thought it had been constructed originally and then it was modified to the angle, right? So you wouldn't walk out into the street. Oh, what there was a almost a sidewalk, yeah, it, just, yeah. it went right up. You'd walk right out into the step out in the street. The only thing that saved you was the telephone that you told you would be there. It's been, that they just moved, but the previous location of that pole has been in the third last 35 years and been hit twice. One time that there was a getaway car, you know, the street, remember? Bang, bang, everybody. <laughs> 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 
So the telephone call there you're talking about? So, that one? The pesky call. It is a weird location. Yeah, yeah very weird. Yeah. Um, so on that ramp, we have that MVP grant and we're trying to reason escape, you know, around the town campus. And so we're thinking that if the ramp is moved, removed, if we can, this would be a good time. But Kathy and the historical commission was saying they want to make sure that if it's taken down and we're not opening up like a can of worms because we don't know what's under the ramp. Right, right. 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 And so yeah. you were saying that the engineer did like a core sample or something? Yeah, to do either drill and do a core sample to see if it's hollow. Or a return to behind There's a body in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so I don't know how much that would cost, but that. Yeah, so we'll get estimates, but when I, I Ross Depot is the one that is going to handle um, the windows and, and the ramp issue. He was the one that answered um, uh, with respect to voting those, and he said, you need to get an architect to deal with the window style um, and what will be, you know, replacing, and then also to get an architect to look at the ramp and see if they can determine what's going on behind the ramp. So could you find out how much that would cost? Yeah. Okay. And maybe by the next for meeting. Both. Is the for wing, are the windows further down the road? We're further down the road, I think. Okay. All right. But so it's the ramp. Yeah. Now is the idea to get rid of the ramp and expose the stone wall foundation? Because that's what's under it. Is it stone? Of course it is. Yeah, definitely. You know how you can tell? Poke a hole. You land one of your offices down in the parlor, you poke a hole from the inside. Yeah, and we'll see what you can Right, we'll be plus you go to like the first side room. I think you can still yeah. stone the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they, that's how they built them back in the day. It, even up to the top of the ramp, though, some of that is more than the foundation, right? You know, like, because it goes up to the, like, goes the first to the first wall downstairs. Yeah, right. So doesn't that go above the foundation when you go up the ramp? Aren't right, but the, 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 the other concern would be if you take that wall off and leave it, what, do we have to then fill it in and stabilize it? Again, well, something that's, would have to be that, in there. At that point, we suggested quite a lot of low units. And then we looked at it, it was professional. And then we're concerned that the foundation was integral to the bottom stones in that ramp. I, so I that's why, it, yeah. That's why it's still in. Yeah. Okay. And then well, CPA well, funds, I mean, and CPA funds could be used to put windows in or fix the side of the building. So, you know, what would because be, that's it. What are, you, what are you talking about windows? But you well, put windows so, in those rooms now. But if you yeah, have, no, that's what I, that's, yeah. that would be right. Right. Peter's, what Peter's saying is you take that ramp out, you're going to, which is what I said, you, what's down there is going to be the stone foundation. What Peter brought to light is, the fact that will it be structurally sound? Yes. Right. That material that's up against the foundation might be there for a reason. Yeah. So that wall doesn't move because now you're talking it's uh, nine feet exposed. That so I would start by pulling the wall on the inside, pulling the sheetrock off the, the outside wall and taking a look at the condition of the foundation from the inside. Yes. That gives you that gives you a, a starting point to see, because now you're looking down at the, at the bottom. Are you volunteering? I think you are. Uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't that. That. I'm just looking at the stone. You're going to win the event. 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 You're going to win the if, if we're going to, I, I believe we should restore it. If we're going to re restore it to 1825 specifications, I definitely would like to be involved. You are, first of all. You're probably the only one in this room that would know what it's going on. I have to confer with Peter. Peter was saying that, um, so I guess with the engineering study, I mean, if you take the ramp off, we would need to know like what would need to be done. Right. Yeah. So it would be yeah. cool. To make sure it's structurally sound because like I said, you've got I mean, what you've look, got you've got ten feet of this <laughs> old wall there that that material that's there now 
is probably stabilizing the wall so it doesn't buckle out mm -hmm. from the way it was built on. All right. So we'll put that in the next agenda then. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all done. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Barry. Yep. Good night. Bye bye. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't think they want us to vote tonight. No, we're going to go on. Hi. 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 So, yeah, uh, you can do it and you can end it all. You see the drop down, the red drop down? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right there. Click on end the meeting and it will close it all out.